I feel a lot of us have a lot going on that makes us feel overwhelmed. We find ourselves drowning in to-do lists, we lack focus, and we experience a lot of daily life stresses. This often results in worries and loss of focus on the most important and often small things in life that bring us a kind of joy or contentment we crave. Overall, we have a mind that's messy with too many tabs open that leaves us feeling stuck in how to change our situation. As a designer, I am trained to navigate my way through a messy design process by structuring thoughts, getting to the root of a design problem and coming up with ideas how to solve it creatively. And over the years, I have found that the methods I use are applicable to the challenges we face in daily life and I have come up with ways for other people to use them. So in this video, I hope to give you an accessible approach to navigating your way through your own messy mind and help you get unstuck. It's a less talking, more doing type of method that you can do by yourself at home. One thing to mention up front is that you can go as broad and as deep as you want. That is what I personally do when I facilitate this process for others. But it's not necessary. This six step way will already be so helpful, I promise. Just follow my lead. Okay, so how I start is with creating a bit of free wall space and I make sure I have a few sharp black markers and a stack of post-it notes. Once we have this ready to go, we'll start with step one. First, I need to get to the root of my stuckness. What are the biggest challenges uh, or hurdles? And maybe even more important, what are the underlying struggles I encounter? When kicking off a design process, this is also where I always start. Okay, so we'll be mapping our overall context by answering some of the following questions. If you had to pick three challenges on the top of your mind, you would like to focus your time on unpacking. What would they be? Please be as specific as possible. Write each challenge down on their own post-it note. What would be the biggest breakthrough you are seeking at the end of this focus time? Write it down on a post-it note. Now write down on bigger post-it notes, main challenges and biggest breakthrough. Now stick your post-it notes on the wall. Now grab your other post-it notes with your challenges on them and put them below your larger post-it note with challenges written on them. Okay. So the next step, let's take a closer look at your day to day. Write down on a post-it note, wake up and on another post-it note, go to bed. Put them on the wall and leave space in between them. So imagine this is a timeline. Write down on a post-it note, a plus and a minus. You are now going to answer some questions about your day to day. What are some things you worry about or that cause you stress when you wake up? These can be things such as your commute, for example. Write them down and write all of them down on separate post-it notes and place them at the start of your timeline next to your minus. Now write down on separate post-it notes the activities that bring you joy on a regular day. Put them on the upper half of your imaginary timeline and see these activities as your one-twos. Now write down the things that on a regular day drain your energy. These are your have-tos that feel like you have to do, but you experience resistance doing them. Add those below on your timeline next to your minus. Now, add things to your timeline that you really want to implement into your day more that you just can't get around right now, but you really want to pursue more in the near future. 
think about things you would like to learn um, and other goals and maybe dreams you have for yourself. Stick them next to a hard post-it note. Take a good look at all the activities on your timeline, specifically the ones that drain your energy. Now, with your biggest breakthrough goal in mind and looking at all of your challenges and activities, try to answer the following question. What do you think is important to change in the near future? You do not have to think about the solution just yet. Think about what changes are needed. Write them on separate post-it notes and stick them underneath your breakthrough post-it note. Step four. Okay, next up, you're going to break down your three main challenges into three sub-problems per challenge. Maybe these are already on your draining activity post-it notes, but I want you to formulate three sub-problems per challenge. So grab some new post-it notes and write down a sub-problem per post-it note. Now I want you to take a look at your sub-challenges or sub-problems and see if any of them overlap with each other. And if they do, put them together in a little cluster. If not, leave them just as they are. For these sub-problem clusters, we're going to do a little brainstorm to come up with ideas for change. Here, we are going to make use of the design thinking method called the how could I question. For each sub-problem, I'm going to set a timer for a few minutes to come up with ideas by asking myself the question, how could I dot dot dot. For example, my sub-problems here are that I have a hard time doing many different things in one day because I lose track of what's important and my whole day feels like a to-do list, which results in not doing many things that bring me joy because time is up. So my question would be, how could I simplify and reorganize my day so that I'm able to work less and do more want to things instead of only have to things? Here, some ideas I can come up with are batch working and setting designated hours for a specific task per day. Starting my day with a one-two activity instead of waiting for the end of the day and hiding my phone to reduce wasted time spent there. So do that for each sub-problem or sub-problem cluster and try to come up with at least three ideas per cluster so that in the end you'll have a whole range of ideas. Of course, ideas per sub-problem could overlap with the other ideas, but this doesn't matter. Now we will make use of the diamond technique in design thinking, where you'll go from diverging what we have just done by coming up with many ideas to converging and distilling the most interesting and helpful ideas for change. So grab your marker and draw a heart or a star on the ideas you feel like you could start implementing into your day right away that feel like they would be most beneficial to you when it comes to your big breakthrough. What do these ideas mean for how you are going to spend your time differently moving forward? So the question is, what needs to happen from you? Also, what type of help can you ask for from the people around you? Your colleagues, partner, family, friends, when it comes to your quest of getting unstuck? Maybe it's only about accountability here, but it could be more. When people know how to help you, more often than not, they are happy to help you. So, grab a few more post-it notes and try to come up with some answers to these last questions. Voila! As you can see from this in-depth Get Unstuck exercise, most of what we've done is just structuring what's inside your head and differentiate which parts of your day need a redesign. When you take the time to differentiate between your challenges and break them up into separate chunks you can start solving for, 
you will find that there are easy steps you can take right now to help yourself get unstuck little by little. And when it comes to solving the overarching challenges you face, it is always about the small things you can do that will add up over time. I actually offer this service of helping people getting unstuck and the way I do this is similar, but I go more into detail about the why as well. Because oftentimes blockers should also be identified and solved for, such as insecurities people face or stress factors that are part of a person's overall challenge. But these six steps are already extremely beneficial to help you understand what needs to happen from you to help yourself get unstuck. So I really hope you give this step-by-step -step approach a go. And when you do, please let me know in the comment section how it went. And if you want my personal help, you can visit my Get Unstuck page on the website and get in contact there with me. Thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you for the next one. Bye.